Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I'd like to share just a few words with you on the issue of Salah. Many ayat of Quran on this subject, many ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu also stressing the importance. But what I'd like to tell you about is an incident which is both shocking and emotional. It is the assassination of Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. When he was stabbed by Abu Lu'lu in the prayer, uh, Salatul Fajr, uh, he was stabbed that many times that his blood was flow- flowing from his wounds. It was a terrible sight. Abu Lu'lu took another six odd of the other companions down. It was a very uh, stressful moment in time. Yet, Umar bin Khattab had the presence of mind to turn behind and ask Abdurrahman ibn Auf to come forward and actually complete the prayer. And then Abdullah ibn Abbas and a few other of the companions then took him back to his home. He then uh, fainted and became unconscious. And he was in that state and a very terrible state uh, uh, according to his family and according to the narrations that we have seen. And clearly we know that a person who is dying effectively and they said that they could see the wound seeping blood and it was, it was terrible. And they wanted to make sure that he was awake because clearly they wanted to have him aroused and uh, conscious of what was going on in order to see whether they could possibly treat what was happening. Now Abdullah ibn Abbas and Miswar ibn Muhrama, they came into the room. The people had tried everything. He was completely unresponsive. They, the family was shouting at him, uh, shaking him, and they said that we can't and make him aware. So the people were very stressed. There was a lot of people at the door of the house. A lot of people were, of course, very uh, distressed of what was happening and what to, do, what to do next. But some of them then said, uh, you know what will make him come round? It will be the prayer. So Abdullah ibn Abbas and Miswar, when they heard this, they went up to uh, Umar ibn Khattab and they said to him in his ear, Ya Amir Mu'mineen, as salah as salah As soon as he heard the word salah, he came round. He said, as salah as salah in his dying state. Ya Allah, come on then. Wala haqq. And in another narration, Wala haddun fil Islam liman tarak as salah There is no share. There is no Islam for the one who leaves the prayer. A dying man who you would never imagine to be in a state, to be thinking about anything, he came to his senses just as he was remembered about the prayer. Brothers and sisters, why do I choose this? When there's so many different issues happening and so many other things that we need to deal with and Muslims in difficult situations and war and poverty and so on and so forth. But the reason I, I point this out is that ultimately when we as Muslims identify our, our weakness and our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the connection that is salah, once we recognize that and we can rectify it and work on it and perfect it, and then we start to understand our identity as slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what we're here to do to worship Him, then we will be in the right state of mind to take these, the actions necessary to deal with the problems that we have in the rest of community and society.